Uh, with that said, we've got a uh, great guest on today, uh, Shane Radliff with um, Liberty Under Attack publication. Great guy. Um, he does a lot of stuff for the Nexus. He's got the Von Yoon podcast. And um, I'm probably going to butcher this like like I butcher everything, but um, he, he's he got uh, Panzia. Um, so... Uh, and we'll we'll go into to details on that for sure. But um, how how you doing, Shane? Hey, um, I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, definitely appreciate uh, appreciate you guys uh, having me on the podcast. And uh, yeah, glad uh, glad the rural internet's uh, working out. Um, yeah, I'm off, I'm not not off grid yet. Working to be off grid, but I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. So um, yeah, glad the glad uh, glad glad we're able to connect this time. Yes, yeah. welcome. For sure, man. You got to get the uh, the SpaceX. Um, uh, what is it? Oh, Starlink. Yeah, Starlink. I need that too. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, um, there's there are not a whole lot of options out here. Um, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately or fortunately, um, I guess depending upon how you look at it. All right. Cool. Um, so I want to talk a bit about Second Realm. I, I mean, I, I, you know, if we could start there, I've been um, really loving those articles. And then you just published one. Uh, fresh out today so you've mm -hmm. just been doing nexus stuff for like um you know for the last couple of days so yeah. we, we really appreciate that too and uh yeah but uh if you could um tell people about uh you know just kind of explain second round sure sure so um i guess i i should i should start by mentioning um there's a really incredible book um called second realm book on strategy um, it's by a guy, by a guy named, uh, pseudonymously named Smuggler uh, and uh, someone else uh, named X Y Z. Um, and uh, I've interviewed Smuggler a number of times. Uh, these are these are, I guess you could say, uh, cypherpunks, crypto anarchists out of um, out over Berlin, Europe, um, that that general area. But uh, um, yeah, they put out this book, and and basically, um, just generally speaking, the, the second realm is a combination of um, of agorism, um, temporary autonomous zones. Um, uh, Hakeem Bay, if you're familiar with it, with uh, with with him, um, the concept of Taz's, um, and um, yeah, really, you know, uh, security culture, crypto anarchy. Um, it's just basically com combining all these all these strategies um, so that we can have uh, pockets of freedom in both physical. Uh, you know, but in both physical space and time, like in person, um, as well as digitally too, um, such as uh, the interwebs, as, as uh, we're talking on now. So, um, I guess to to start with definitions, I always like to start with uh, with definitions. Um, but uh, um, yeah, if we're gonna talk about the second realm, we gotta talk about the first realm. And the first realm is uh, is is why we're here. It's why the Nexus exists. Um, it's uh, it's the servile society. It's 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 uh, you know the society that does not respect self ownership uh, or individual liberty, but rather heraldic supremacy of government and authority. Um, it upholds the collective as superior to the individual. Um, so that's the um, you know that's the the state. Um, that's the servile society. That that's the, the society that upholds the state. Um, that's you know why we why we we all do what we do. Um, at least uh, in, in, at least in part. Um, so yeah, the second realm then. Um, uh, and, and, and along with second round book on strategy, um, there's a, a fiction, a crypto agorist novella called hashtag agora. And uh, I call this the fictional counterpart to Second Round Book on Strategy. So you have the strategy guide, and then you have the, the fiction counterpart if you actually want to see how these ideas um, actually coalesce in, in, you know, um, in, in, real, you know, in, in, in real life. Um, hashtag Agora is actually based on, again, the, uh, the cypherpunks over in, uh, over in Europe, uh, Berlin specifically, um, at, least at, at least at that time. So the second realm, um, defined by hashtag Agora, um, they say, quote, te technically the second realm is described as encrypted communication, encrypted currencies, anonymous and pseudonymous identities, and untra untraceable action, end quote. So um, it's very much integrating that, uh, that crypto anarchy notion of um, the removal of attribution. If, um, if, there's, no, if there's no attribution, um, if there's no attribution to, you know, legal name, then there's no way that, you know, so-called, there's, there's no way that they can, you know, they can come after you, right? If there's no one to charge. Um, and then again, you know, temporary autonomous zones with mobility, if they don't even know where you are, then they can't, then, uh, then it, it makes you very much, very, very much more uh, invulnerable to the coercion of the state. Oh, and the servile society. So, um, yeah, to, to reiterate, you've got the, the first realm, which is just the, the, the state, the servile society, and then the second realm, the pockets of freedom, um, where we can where we can not only, uh, you know, hold these principles of non-aggression and, you know, try to, um, you know, tr you know <laughs> trade voluntarily and peacefully with each other. We can we can we can hold these principles. Um, but 
um, you know, it doesn't really matter all that much if we can't if we can't live it. Um, so the the strategy of the second realm of building second realms is uh, so that we can we can live our principles um, in physical space and time. You know, in person, not just you know over the internet. The internet's been great for for connecting and networking, but um, it, it's never been more important, especially after 2020, um, that these things uh, you know actually start locally um, and that you know people start connecting. Um, you know, and, and, and meat space. So, um, you know, so-called meat space. Um, because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, things are, things are, uh, you know, things are, uh, have been heating up a little bit in the survival side. And maybe, I guess maybe they've been, maybe they're cooling down now. Um, who knows? But, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's certainly <laughs> some, there's certainly some new areas of opportunity for Agoras. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll leave it there and turn it over to you guys. Um, not yet. So that's, a, I guess, a good, good little introduction to, to the concept and kind of where, where we're at today. That's great. Yeah, it is. Go, go ahead, Dag. I, I don't want to cut you off. Or, cut you <laughs> no, off like I, I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, no, I uh, you know, this one of the things that really drew me to you know gorism was you know the like okay, we're anarcho-capitalists. It's like now what? <laughs> you know, um, so bringing about actual freedom, even if it's just in limited amounts or limited people at whatever time, you know, kind of the pockets of freedom thing is, you know, just where I feel I can make, you know, the most difference mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, in the world. So that's one of the things that really, really, really drew me to them. And one of the things I really like about a lot of stuff that you, you talk about with the second realm and, uh, and, and Vanu, which, um, if I'm to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's basically, that's basically means, you know, trying your best to be ungovernable, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it, essentially, yeah. It's um, um, Vanu. Um, it's uh, the it's an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable. And uh, basically, the definition is uh, becoming as invulnerable to the coer to, to public coer to public coercion, the state, and private coercion, um, private violators of person and property. Um, you know, thieves, rapists. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a you know a a, um, a, a vaccination company, something along those lines, uh, might fall into the realm of private coercion um, at this point. So. Um, yeah, becoming invulnerable to, to those things, both public and private, uh, both the private varieties. Yeah, it's definitely, um, definitely more important now, <laughs> you know, than ever and, uh, and going into the future for sure to, you know, take consideration and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, what kind of advice can you give? Oh, sorry. Sure. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, uh, I, I was just going to say, what kind of advice can you give somebody to, uh, you know, to live this lifestyle or to, to even just make a transformation to be, uh, you know, ungover ungovernable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 uh, it's not, it's not super, it's, it's, it's not easy, but, um, then, then again, you know, um, being, uh, being a slave isn't easy if you have a, a freedom, if you have a, you know, a freedom mindset either. So, um, but, uh, um, yeah, as far as uh, as far as solu as far as solutions, it's very very much, um, you know, whether we're talking second realm or Vanu, um, basically cut uh, the 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 goal is to cut as many ties to the state and the survival society as possible. Um, the less the the less control they have over you, the more freedom you have, obviously, and that's just you know basic self sufficiency, um, and uh, you know building independence from, uh, you know, from these very unstable uh, unstable institutions. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly easier, certainly easier said than done. I guess I, I can speak to, to kind of my experience and, and it's, it's, and I'll say a lot of it wasn't, wasn't planned at all. I mean, I, I didn't plan this. Um, it just kind of happened the way that it did. Um, the, the past couple of years have just transpired into, into what it has. Um, but yeah, right now I, uh, I have a, I called a not real day job. Um, I make, uh, I make liquor at the family distillery, make, make liquor. Um, that's, that's my job is, is making liquor. Um, and then, um, and that's, uh, you know, very, very flexible hours, all that stuff. So I, I have a 22 acre homestead here and, um, there's, uh, um, as, uh, as we were kind of talking about before the show, um, just, just a little bit, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, all, there's lots to do on a homestead. There's lots, lots of ways to, to, to make money. And, uh, with the way things are going now, that that's where a lot of, a lot of, that's the direction a lot of people are going. So, um, if, uh, if that's kind of where, where you're headed is kind of, uh, more of towards of an off grid, off grid sort of life, off grid self-sufficient lifestyle, um, then, uh, then, then, yeah, that's, uh, that's a, a terrific route to go. Um, 
If not, I mean, uh, there's 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 a there's a lot of options available. Um, there's there's a lot of options available, and the idea is um, to make progress, right? Uh, to to um, not just uh, you know sit there and say you know I wish I could have freedom. I wish the I wish this was possible. It's no like these solutions are available. They've been around for um, hell. Rayo, the main the uh, main proponent of Vanu, was writing about these things in the 1960s. Um, and obviously there were there were you know anarchists um, anarchists and, and folks before him, so um, yeah none none of this uh, none of this stuff is new and, and, and there are solutions out there. Um, I guess like I could speak a little a little more to uh, a, a little more to Vanu um, as as there are you know there's an abundance of solutions there, but uh, yeah as I said the, the idea is is uh, um, is lifestyle changes in pursuance of an invulnerability to coercion. So um, for example Rayo started out as a van nomad he uh, moved out of his apartment into a camper right on a pickup truck and uh, you know pursued mobility um, as his uh, as his main strategy and he he, he uh, stayed mostly on uh, so-called public lands um, out uh, out in the west and uh, then his uh, his next his next uh, lifestyle change his next strategy was wilderness fauna um, which entailed uh, and Rayo was a very radical radical guy so your path doesn't have to be Rayo's Vanu was yours for the making as I always say but his his path in particular um, he wanted to stay in a tent with Roberta his free mate um, out in uh, the middle of uh, uh, the Siskiyou forest um, in northern California and southern Oregon so that was uh, their lifestyle for, for for a number of years until uh, until he disappeared uh, voluntarily or involuntarily we don't we don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, those are a couple couple possibilities for for I guess uh, the wilderness vani for more radical folks. Van nomadism is a terrific um, first step lifestyle. It's uh, you know you know you know how to drive a car. Everyone most people know how to drive a car, especially if you um, you know live in the USA. It's pretty common. If you're in Europe and other places, maybe you don't. Maybe you haven't driven a car. I guess um, I do know some folks that haven't. But I'm at least in the states. You know, it's it's not you know that's that's not a that's not a barrier to entry. And uh, it's a very freeing lifestyle. I know I know a lot of people. We've, we've interviewed a, a number of van nomads um, over on the Vanu podcast, and um, I did uh, I did some some I guess some traveling for I guess you could say three months or so. Um, and I, I guess a portion of that would, could be considered um, I guess the the uh, vehicle nomadism uh, variety, not a van but a car. Um, and uh, beyond that, um, like I said, what, what I'm doing here with uh, you know trying I've got a, a homestead. I'm working working to go off grid um, here over the next year or two. Um, perpetual traveling. Um, Rayo even talked about back um, back in I think it was 1967. Um, he talked about something he called ethical enclave trading as a potential solution. Which ethical enclave trading is what I call the precursor to agorism. Um, very you know some very 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 interesting parallels. Um, and um, yeah, definitely predated it. And Ray and uh, Konkin did talk about Rayo and Vaughn in a number of publications, um, and at least a handful of times. So. Um, interesting stuff there, but re but regardless, agorism is a strategy. Um, ethical enclave trading, you know, just just um, yeah, um, those are kind of more in the realm of financial independence. Um, but yeah, I guess those those are just some some various some various um, lifestyle changes in terms of Vanu. Um, beyond that, um, yeah, yeah, beyond that, I mean, just just cut ties to the state. Um, cut ties to the state. Cut ties to the servile society. Um, as uh, you know, um, if you if you've got you know three bank accounts and you only need two, you know, close the bank accounts. Um, if you, um, I don't know, have two cars that have you know registration or something on it, you only need one. Um, maybe only renew one next time. I, I, like those are kind of silly examples, but you you get the idea. Like you're, you're, the idea is, is is to yeah cut as many ties to um, to the first realm as possible, and um, and then yeah build up build up unless they're build unless up. they're foreign bank. Go ahead. <laughs> Go on, sorry. No, uh, unless they're foreign bank accounts, you want as many avenues for foreignly as possible, and um, in my in my opinion, just so that you can uh, you uh, you've got different avenues you, you you can take if if need be. Just you know, foreign bank accounts. That is though. Sure. Yeah, and that's and that's that's fair. That's uh, that's definitely fair, um, and. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely fair, and uh, a lot with with a lot of especially with uh, whether it's uh, you know the agoras, agorism or just financial independent route nowadays. Um, there's it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty impossible to do, and well, not I guess not impossible, but if you're if you're going to reach like uh, I guess a larger, um, you know, more normie audience, you're, you're probably going to need a bank account, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, as as we all know, there's there's crypto and and um, there's crypto and and, 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 and you yeah, know building absolutely. up the agora, building up the second realm. Um, but uh, but yeah, you're you're, you're right. Um, you're, you're certainly right. Um, Rayo, Rayo talked about this. I guess that that's another another strategy too is legal interstices. But I'm I'm not a, a huge fan of that. They're basically legal loopholes. 
Um, yeah, I'm not not a huge fan. of. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan of that either. But um, but but it is useful to have many, you know, uh, mm-hmm. foreign bank accounts for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, what what's really funny is the the van life used to be like you know ridiculed and uh, uh, you know in a van down by the river and and now I just see so many people trying to trying to live that van life now, but. Um, uh, but I really want to touch on what's up. I was, I was just saying, yeah, it's definitely I, popular. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now it's it's like a, I almost you know want to do it. Um, but uh, an, another thing too is that uh, Rayo, I'm really like his work was pretty much, I'd say, very like unknown. And, um, mm-hmm. and it's, it's cool that you live that lifestyle and, uh, it's great that you pretty much revived his whole entire, you know, uh, philosophical outlook and, and, uh, you know, uh, his writings and, and everything. So, um, really appreciate that too. Sure. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it was, it was certainly not planned. Um, it, it wasn't planned. I, it, I, it was actually Kyle Kyle Reardon, my uh, my old co-host of the the Vonnie podcast. Hopefully he'll hopefully a returning co-host too. But um, yeah, it was just a random. He's like, you know, I saw I saw a book review about this book on on someone's website. You might want to get it for our. We, we were doing something at the time called the Direct Action Series. Like it might be worth an episode. I don't know. So it was a completely random toss in the dark. It wasn't planned at all. Um, I definitely didn't plan on spending so many hours digitizing all of these publications. But um, yeah, it's 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 been it's been fantastic. Um, it's. It's been a, a great, I, I guess, historical kind of libertarian history kind of, uh, you know, adventure. Um, but uh, but also, too, there's there's so much value. Um, there's so much value in terms of solutions. And yeah, um, yeah there's there's there, there's so much value. And just the, just the, the way the, the way uh, the way the way Rayo thought about um, a lot of a lot of things and the way that he that he saw the world back in the 60s is just crazy. Um, I mean, there's um, and I, I put it in. I think I put it in. um the uh the article um that that we published at agoras nexus today um but uh this was like i think it was 1970 but he said quote i want a lifestyle which can easily withstand the worst technocratic super totalitarianism that is within the realm of reasonable possibility we may still have some contact with that society but we won't have to worry appreciably over what idiotic thing the people molesters do next any more than somebody who takes a vacation at the riviera now and then needs to be much concerned about the politics of france our change in lifestyle will, in a sense, be an answer. To, or, sorry, our change in lifestyle will be, in a sense, an answer to the omnipotent, omnipotent of state line of Rothbard and Hess. Will answer not only in words, but by doing the only real way. So, like you, you look at you look at um, this quote. He's talking, he's talking about the technocracy back in like 1970. Um, so he's certainly a little ahead of the game uh, on that one, because a lot of people just found out about that technocracy in, in this year, maybe even some people, some folks. Um, but he, he talked about that. He, he talked about um, uh, secure, secure communicators, which would facilitate, uh, you know, they're basically secure radio device, encrypted radio devices that would facilitate Agora's trade in the underground um, using underground payments, um, you know, you know, an underground bank over, over, over the net. Like just crazy, like crazy foresight, um, you know, crazy foresight. And um, like I said, there's, there's, there's so much wealth. Um, there, there's some, there's so much wealth of uh, solutions um, in the realm of Vanu, and um, yeah, as I said, um, as I've said so many times on the podcast and and in articles, um, you know, Vanu is yours for the making too. Um, we, I certainly haven't thought, haven't conceived of every single possible lifestyle change or lifestyle com- lifestyle change, com- you know, lifestyle combination, because um, that's another thing too. You can combine these things. Um, you know, you need off grid, off grid homesteading with crypto anarchy. Like, you can do all these things um, and have a really, really resilient, um, resilient lifestyle. Um, so, um, yeah, Vani is great, but then again, there's also these, these, uh, kind of new strategies, second realm, temporal autonomous zones, agorism, um, yeah, use them all, mm-hmm. use them all. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> I, uh, like what you were saying about, um, like, I'm like a, like a homestead and, it gives you like so many different opportunities and everything for uh, for making money or, or contributing or trading or whatever. It, it's really nice. It's kind of like the the possibilities are endless, you know. Uh, what um 
what's some of the stuff that you guys are, are figuring out that, that's working out for you guys, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. yeah over yeah. at, uh, am I going to mispronounce this, Panzia? <laughs> yep, it's, uh, it's Paznia. So, so, uh, so. It's a, Pasnia, the, I'm sorry, man. The, the Free Republic of Pasnia. Um, and some some, ba- some background. <laughs> I, I butcher that too. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I, I don't ex- I don't expect I everything that I everything that I choose to to venture in. I, I it, it requires a lot of context and explanation for like Vanu. Um, so it's it's okay. Like I I'm used to I'm used to it by now. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, Pasnia, permanent autonomous zone, um, as well as uh, Paz's peace in Spanish. So um, basically, what the the idea is that I've got I've got a 22 acre homestead here. And, um, I, it's, it's basically just a cool way to do, I call it, I call them stakeholder memberships. You can be, you can become a Pasnian and we'll make you a, a handmade passport. It looks pretty legit actually. Um, and, uh, you know, some other, some other cool perks, um, right. Some perks for becoming a Pasnian. Um, and basically the, the first step here, at, uh, the, I, the, the dude, end- I'll, I'll try to get that. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, you're, you're good. I'll, I'll try to get that. I'll try to get that stamp. I'll try to get that stamp by like. You know, as many places as, <laughs> as, as I could, you know, yeah. <laughs> make it look as legit as possible. Like, what what do you mean this isn't a legit passport? This thing's been stamped by, like, four different governments, man. Like, You've never heard of Pasnia before? It's as legit as the, the regular ones. You've never heard yeah, of the like, come on. Have you ever heard Give of the, the Great times. Republic of Pasnia? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, really, it, it's it's just it's just a neat way to do kind of uh, I guess uh, to do some fundraising for int- intentional community because um, I do want to have uh, you know intentional community here on the property. Um, that's that's certainly the goal. Um, and then beyond that, you know, we're talking about second realms. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of folks uh, you know starting up homesteads. Um, there's uh, you know I, I talked to uh, Jim Davidson who does a project called FreedomLandDAO. Um, dot com, and uh, they're trying to set up you know liberty communities. He's trying to raise you know get investors. Well, there's a lot of really, really cool, I guess, community projects like this happening. Um, and uh, Pasnia, I want it to be, uh, you know, there's an intentional community here, but then there's also going to be, you know, for like-minded people, come here and camp for free. Like, you know, if, if you want to come here, if you need a place to come stay for a week or two, you want to come, um, you know, eat a couple weeks of, of fresh lamb or something, like, come on out here. We'd love to have you. Build a, you know, we want the community aspect. We want to build an, you know, an Agora ethical enclave. And uh, then beyond that, uh, you know, as I said, a, a node. Um, and the overarching um, uh, and the overarching network. So um, yeah, as far as as far as what I, what I'm finding out here, um, this year is is really um, the year of food self sufficiency. Um, that's that's the goal. I started with uh, lambs and goats last year, um, just a, a, a couple goats and, and a handful of lambs, just to, to kind of get started. And um, lambs are really really easy. Um, surprisingly surprisingly easy. Um, easy, they're easy animals, easy animals to raise. And I just had within the past couple of months, um, I've had three, three little baby lambs. Um, never done that before. Never, never had any experience with any of this stuff before, but it's all worked out fine. It's all been very, very easy. Um, and yes, yeah, like the lambs, um, back to the lambs, um, process, uh, we actually processed, uh, I processed from start to finish, um, an entire lamb, a uh, couple lambs actually. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very easy process for, for those who have, who have, who have skinned deer or uh, things like that processed deer. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a smaller animals like that. It's not, not like, not, uh, you know, I, I, we couldn't, we couldn't do a cow here at Pasnia yet. Let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, lambs are very, very manageable, very easy animals, um, delicious, delicious, um, food. And, um, beyond that, uh, um, for folks who are, like I said, looking for food cells efficiency, I have, I haven't gotten into this yet, but I know it's, I know it's, I, I've, I've got to build a cage. I've got to, I've got to get on it, but, um, rabbits and, um, rabbits and quail are, um, two very, very good, um, animals to look at for food self sufficiency. Um, yeah, rabbits reproduce very, very quickly. Um, it's very quick turnarounds, um, in terms of, uh, food and nutrition. So, yeah. Um, both of those are something you can do in a small space too you don't need you know you don't need to be on a big homestead to do rabbits or quail and get a lot of meat uh and eggs you know for quail obviously um yep build, build, so it's build something you can do cage. like it, relatively suburban it, or whatever your garage. Yeah. yeah yep how is how is rabbit meat i mean i've had like elk buffalo i mean i've had a lot of different meats but i've, I've never had a rabbit I don't think I've actually eaten rabbit either, um, but it, I, I I can't imagine. It, yeah, it's it would it just would it be. Um, I, I can't imagine it'd be bad though. I'm, it'd be it'd be good. No, it's it, I mean it's not to sound too cliche. I mean it's kind of kind of chickeny. We had one. Uh, it was a wild rabbit out here. Our dogs actually killed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, I got it from him. It was still in pretty good shape, and I was like, I'm gonna cook this fucker up. <laughs> so, nice. uh, but uh, but yeah, it wasn't bad. 
Yeah, none none of it. I mean, I I've been I've been really surprised. I I've been eating, I guess, more kind of a no satile carnivore diet for the past year and a half for two years. And like I've like I've eaten, um, like there's some really strange. Um, I, I guess like there, there's only there's only so many flavors in the world, right? Like, um, so like there it's, um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you would think wouldn't taste very good, um, but actually, um, like for example, um, I'll say uh, you know, like beef tongue. Um, you mentioned beef tongue to somebody and they'd probably freak out. But when you actually, you know, put the beef tongue in the crock pot and you cut, you cut the skin off, you basically got a, a really, really delicious, more nutrient rich chuck roast. Like that's what you have and it's delicious. But people like would just get, you know, freaked out about a beef tongue, um, <laughs> which I, I would understand before. I would certainly understand before a couple, a couple years ago, but, um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of this stuff, you know, got, got it, got to get over those, I guess I maybe call them first realm fears, possibly, um, <laughs> possibly um yeah like especially with uh um what we've got we've i've got uh right now i've got two two milk producing lambs on the property and um i've got a, a goat that'll be producing at, at some point here soon um she has her when she has her kids but um like the like the, the pasteurization stuff uh, pasteurization and such um you know like it's it's uh i don't know people people have some have some um have some fears um, about, uh, about their meat. And when it comes to feedlot meat, like stuff you buy at the grocery store, yeah, I don't eat that shit either. Um, yeah, I don't eat that. Like, certainly there's, there's reasons to be fearful of that, but there's not, there's no reason to be fearful of, yeah. of, of eating, eating animal meat. Oh yeah. we get, I've had people say to me like, oh, well, you know, how do I know that your chickens have had their antibiotics? And I'm like, they haven't, they don't need them. <laughs> like, maybe you should ask why the stuff in the grocery store needs it, <laughs> you know, uh, why, why is it raised in a way that they get sick? You know, my, my chickens don't get sick. They just don't, if they do, they, I mean, they, they just die. Like, <laughs> like they don't, you know, they're just, you know, they just crap out or something, you know, that happens from time to time, but there's no like sickness. There's, you know, if, if, if you're raising things the proper way, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just not an issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. If, if the, if the animals are raised, you know, raised well on a, on a species specific diet, like what they're supposed to eat, um then yeah they you know they they generally speaking yeah, they'll they'll live you know good good you know good yeah good healthy good healthy lives yeah for sure yep and uh and, and i and i and i kind of i kind of turn around time know, on like lamb oh sorry um yeah so turn around time on lamb but i i uh, uh so the, yeah the turn around time on lamb i got um i guess it was i, I got a 4 month old um lamb from my uh my neighbor here um my got my neighbor delivers lambs mm -hmm. to my to my homestead it's nice um but uh <clears throat> yeah, four, okay. four four month old lamb, um, and I processed it. That I probably would, I probably got that in April, and uh, processed it. Um, Thanksgiving, basically Thanksgiving weekend, so um, seven months. Okay. Um, seven months fattened it up. Um, probably could have, probably could have fattened it up more, but um, I wanted, I wanted some meat. Um, so yeah, seven seven months turnaround. Um, not too bad. I've got another one out there. Freddy Freddy two, um, is uh, is out there. Actually, no, this is Freddy one. Um, Freddy one's out there now. Um. <laughs> And uh, I guess he's. But it'll be, yeah, about, be, it'll be about a year for him. Well, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, I and I don't. I didn't. Ac <laughs> I accidentally named a couple of them. But no, you're right. Uh, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> We've got a pig with a name that needs to go, and it's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Def definitely know what you mean. Definitely know what you mean. But um. So um. I guess I don't remember if there's anything else I wanted to add on that. Um, no, but lamb, lambs are super easy. I was I was going to I, I wanted to have a couple of like each animal. Um, I want to have like a couple, you know, a handful of lambs, a couple of pastured pigs, a couple of bison, a couple of yaks, like just a couple of everything. But lambs have been so easy um, that uh, I'm thinking about just you know having two big fields. I've got yeah two massive fields out here. Just got to throw just got to throw electric fence around it too. Not like uh, bison or pigs where you got to really um, you got to get some real substantial fencing, um, to keep those in. So I don't know. I'm, I'm really into lamb. I'm really into lamb right now. Um, <laughs> which, uh, again, never didn't think, didn't think I would be homesteading and, uh, definitely didn't think I'd be eating this much lamb. That's for sure. But I'm enjoying it. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with specializing. You know, if, if you find something that works for you, uh, especially because once you have the infrastructure for that particular animal, you know, it's just, you know, just when you scale up, you know, things can get more efficient. So it's, you know, it can, a lot of times if you find something that works for you, man, you know, I mean, take it like we sort of fell into 
uh, heritage free turkeys, you know, like we never expected it, but it started working and we sell out of them every year. So we're like, well, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. We, uh, just started, yeah. I, uh, yeah, so... I ordered, I ordered, I ordered a couple dozen, uh, fertilized duck eggs off eBay and, um, just this pat, just this weekend, mm-hmm. um, I've been, uh, they've been hatching. Um, got probably getting close to a 50% hatch rate. Got a couple, I guess maybe one, hope one for sure, I guess, finishing up hatching today. Um, hopefully two more. Um, but, um, but yeah, I've, I've thinking about it, whether it's quail or duck, um, in terms of like the, you know, the entrepreneurship agorist type angle. I mean, um, I haven't seen anyone around here selling duck. Um, so like, like duck eggs or like ducklings, um, you know, food that produces food. Like, um, mm-hmm. I haven't, I haven't seen that. So like I, I'm, I could set the market on that. So like, I'm, I'm, this is kind of just, uh, um, all this stuff, like basically all this stuff is just brand new to me. Um, and I, I want to make that just very, very clear. Like I, I would, I, I didn't know how to do any of this shit. Um, definitely didn't know how to do any of it. So, um, I, 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 I really want to emphasize that, uh, um, you know, like there's, there's, there's certainly reason, there's certainly reasons to, to fear, like, in, I guess getting into new things, but, um, I don't know this it's we've I, I think we've we've been a little misled I, I know my entire life growing up I was told about oh oh you know back on you know back when your grandparents you know great grandparents grew up on there they they raised all their animals it was it was hard work it was super hard work it's like well you know I, I don't know um, you know what what's what's more difficult for me what I couldn't do for you know from year 18 from age 18 to age 25 was I couldn't I could not do a survival society job like that was miserable that was that was that was hard work. Um, that was hard and miserable work. Um, and, uh, you know, like I, I call whether it's whether it's off-grid homesteading or van nomadism or whatever, I call them liberated lifestyles. And the idea is, and, uh, you know, 2020 did this vol- did this involuntarily for a lot of people. But um, really, the, the idea is to is to, to get out of that, to, to get out of the survival society in the first realm so that you can actually own your thoughts again for like the first time. Right. Because um, a lot of people and, and me included, you know, we've been we've been so brainwashed and programmed. Um, our entire lives that it's really hard to actually kind of determine um, what thoughts are what thoughts are actually ours and what's what's what aren't um, so whether it's uh, you know someone you know starting a van nomad lifestyle lifestyle or you know um, if you're if you're a traveler coming through Pasnia for a month or so um, you know come you know unwinding and uh, you know I guess uh, I guess getting a clear head um, and uh, um, I guess that that's that's I think it's a really 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 good first step too and uh, like I said a lot of people involuntarily got offered that that uh, that choice in 2020 and um um yeah i don't know there's 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 certainly um there's certainly some negative things happening in the survival society in the first realm right now but um yeah what well, there's 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 some more folks uh, i think seeing uh seeing the the problems um the problems of the survival society e- even if they aren't uh, you know uh, making radical lifestyle changes um i think there there are certainly there's certainly a lot of uh, local organizing happening um so yeah, I think there's there's certainly a lot to a lot to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Um and uh uh Pasnia sounds great, man. Like uh you know, I'm ready to get a passport myself <laughs> and uh <laughs> maybe even uh you know, check it out for a week or whatever and uh Yeah, and, and you know, get some uh get some farm skills or whatever, but yeah, and, and I, sh- I should mention. Um, Go on, so sorry. La- no, you're you're good. Uh, you're good. La- last year, um, we had uh, an event, co- what I called Vani Fest One. Um, it was uh, last weekend in September. Um, had about twenty or twenty five self liberators out here. We uh, um, we don't like to do you know sp- spontaneity is better. I'm, I'm, you know, but not big fans of the the schedule. You know, the the kind of uh, um, you know, I guess th- there's nothing wrong with it. But that's not what we do here at Pasnia. Um, but we had we we just come up with you know one or two self liberation goals for the for the for you know for the uh, for the weekend where it'll be a whole week this time. But uh, last year we assembled a 3D printer on the property, so everyone got you know a chance to to, to watch that process. Um, to help with it if they wanted to kind of watch the calibration with it nice. um so yep yeah, that 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 happened out here um there's a couple other projects that you know redacted for security culture purposes um but um yeah this year this year um there's a lot of demand for um for events you know for for gatherings um so we're gonna obviously gonna have bonnie fest too which um is uh basically last weekend in, last weekend in september only starting on the last i guess the last monday in september um it'll be a, a whole week um you got to be vetted i got to know you to come out here um but uh um anyway uh yeah, we've got uh, telegram telegram groups um basically uh you know get into those build up your reputation and um if uh if we both know somebody and someone can vouch for you 
um, then uh, then obviously you're, you're welcome on the property. We're, d- we're doing this in very security culture, um, very very security culture minded way. And I guess I'll also mention yeah. for for folk, and, and it's also kind of funny too because I can promote the events and then just say, well, you know, look, we're having these cool events, but you can't come. Um, which I don't know, it's kind of rude, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best form of marketing, dude. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of like what what uh, Eric Cartman did with. Uh... With his, like, yeah, the park. Park. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. So we, we've got we've got an event coming um, up uh, last last weekend in March. Um, it's just a, an unofficial camping and riding weekend. But so if, if you're if you're interested, in, um, if you're interested, hop in the Telegram uh, Telegram uh, Telegram channel. Um, we've got a, a chat a, a chat group. All the information's at, at the website paznia dot com p a z n i a dot com. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Um, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to go back to something you talked about. Um, you're saying like vetting people and, uh, what was the term you're using? I'm thinking OPSEC. Uh, what, what were you, what uh, was the term you were just using? Security culture is what I, the, the general term I use. Security culture. That's right. I had heard on, um, the Vani podcast a while back, they were talking a little bit about like, um, like, um, you know, sort of like how to like, you know how to like vet people and stuff, uh, things like this. Cause like, so for instance, like, you know, like I've, I've been dicking around with like freedom cell and stuff. And of course, you know, you're always like, hey, I hope everyone's legit. Right. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. so that kind of stuff is very important. You know, the whole, the whole security culture and everything. Do you have any like, maybe like recommended reading or anywhere you might be able to point people for some information on that kind of stuff if they wanted to get a little more into that? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, I would, um, I would, I guess I'd, I'd recommend. Um, we've we've done a lot of ep- a number of episodes on the Vani podcast, um, and the show notes are there too. Uh, I know just recently, I think it was episode ninety nine of the podcast. I released uh, the audiobook for uh, Kyle's. I mentioned uh, Kyle before, Kyle Rudin. Um, his book, Just Below the Surface: Guide to Security Culture. Um, uh, the audiobook for that is out on the the Vani podcast uh, um, podcast feed. Uh, that's a really really good starting point. Um, gets into a, a lot of a lot of very different areas. Um, and uh, you're talking about betting. Um, Kyle talks about uh, uh, there are at least a couple few articles on you know activist organizations and such. Um, so yeah, he talks about betting and some issues that have happened in the past. You know, with real historical case studies um, and and those sorts of things. So that that'd be a really good place to start. Is um, those episodes of the podcast? Uh, there's you know uh, good show notes there. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I mean. Rayo, Ray, um, beyond that, I mean, uh, just Rayo, Rayo generally, um, we've got, um, if, if you go to yeah, VaniPodcast.com, there's a tab, um, it says free Vani books. Um, yeah, Vani book one, Vani book two, those all have a lot of articles by Rayo. Um, Vani life March, 1973 is incredible too. Um, there's a lot of security culture, um, minded stuff, uh, um, in there. Um, but yeah, those are on that, uh, that free books tab there. It's uh, the Vani podcast site. Um, and those are, yeah, Rayo was, I mean, there, there was, People would say he was, um, um, I don't know, what's the, paranoid? People would say he's paranoid. He was just he was just very, very good at security. He was very good <laughs> at what he did. Um, yeah, very, very good at all of it. But, uh, yeah. What's that, what's that saying, man? Just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, d- I'll definitely hop on Telegram and uh, try to get my try to be a, a good, uh, good Paz Paznian and um, for sure, man. So yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, <laughs> but, obvious, um, obviously, obviously, like uh, we we've 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 uh, we've 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 uh, I guess coordinated enough. We we we've worked with each other enough. You got you guys are obviously welcome out here um, for for the events. Um, invited Jim, yeah, um, yeah, invited. Um, yeah, there's 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 going to be some some good and I guess I'll mention this too. I'll mention this too in, in terms of Vani Fest. I try not to promote like I, I haven't officially announced anything yet, but I guess I'll um, go ahead and mention this. There's since there's not going to be a lot of like um, I guess cultural stuff like musical events and things happening this year, or I guess or there weren't going. I guess there there weren't going to be. There's a lot of demand for 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 events. We're got, we're hoping to have some musical performances um, at uh, some liberty minded performances um, at Vani Fest this year. So. Um. Yeah, we're hoping to do that. Well, you you guys heard it here first, so. Yeah, that's all. Um, that's all. Breaking say. news on that one. What? Uh, <laughs> what? Um. What advice do you have? Like, you know, Liberty Under Attack is is a great publication. Um, 
I think it's my favorite by far. So, um, what? Uh, well, I I love Copub Co too, but uh, 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 definitely those two are you know amazing publications for sure. Um, but uh, what uh, what advice do you have for um, for publishers? Because uh, Agoras Nexus is is getting into into publishing, and um, we are going to have we've already got a, 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 already have it planned out for a, a couple big names to. Um, to drop books with us. So what, what kind of advice would you have for, uh, for, for somebody like me? Sure. Um, so I, I guess, um, yeah. Over, uh, oh gosh. That's a, that's, a, that's a tough question. Um, yeah, I, I suppose. Sorry, um, mate. <laughs> oh, you're, you're all right. You're all right. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, what advice would I have for, for, um, <clears throat> For publishers, I guess uh, the the unfortunate one that that I, the the unfortunate one I, I was talking to um, there's a, another um, another author um, and uh, I guess another author um, bookseller um, who I was talking to and um, uh, unfortunately one of one of our publishing avenues is, is Kindle Direct Publishing which is uh, which is uh, Evil Amazon but um, uh, but we we get a lot of a lot of uh, organic traffic um, with books on Amazon. Um, don't like them being listed there, but these are books that um, I don't think would have ever sell would would have ever sold um, if if they weren't listed there. Um, like for example, Citizens of Version Sabotage is our is our bestseller, um, and it's just it's just from Amazon. I, like I, I I don't know where it comes from, but it just it's just there. Um, so like at least I can have some solace in the fact that you know it's it's Amazon that's selling it, but at the same t like they're like I, I don't I don't know how it's happening. I know it's got like fifty reviews, and I don't know where they're coming from. So. Um, that's, I guess that's, something. it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it is kind of funny that it sucks. It's, it's, it sucks. But like, that's where, like, <laughs> that's at least, at least for that book, at least for that book. So I don't know. It's, well, why not? I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, on the one hand, it's like, yeah, it sucks. Like, but, but it's like, shit, they're selling it for you. So like, yeah, like it's, it's almost like, it's almost like you're winning. Like, it's not like, oh, we're settling and selling it there. It's like, they're. They're doing your work for you, man. So I don't know. That that Maybe, and it's and it's I, also I get not wanting to deal with them <laughs> if you can avoid it, but <laughs> and, it, and it's also too that, that um so we we have um Ben Stone's uh, anarchist abolition uh, anar uh anarchist abolitionist uh, Bad Quaker's Journey his uh, I guess more um, more I guess autobiographical um book um but yeah that one we've got uh, basically three three D printed gun schematics on the cover of that um which yeah is on Amazon so like we're, we we <laughs> if, if we're we're trying to like if if we're going to be in this position where we you know we have like it's it's kind of the same thing we we're talking about um. Um, you know, some of the legal intercises earlier, um, you know, about maybe uh, maybe ha ha having a bank account um, like uh, like they're not they're not good. Uh, you know, they're not good. Um, uh, they're not good um, middle grounds. And I guess that that does. Op or they're not good solutions. And I guess that does. I guess I should mention um, because there, there's you know, we we're talking about solutions. Um, so in terms of second realm strategy um, for things like these, there, there are um, rules for people called proxy merchants. And um, so the idea is basically a uh, um, intermediary um, to facilitate um, interaction between the realms, between the first realm and the second realm, um, and in Vanu terms, between the, the servile society and um, a secure Vanu home base. So um, I guess uh, to, to toss out another idea here, uh, you know, possibly... Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some proxy merchant rules for publisher. Like for maybe there's some pro. I don't know. Maybe maybe if if you were to like um, if you're getting into publishing, um, maybe you get a printing press and uh, you know you're the underground um, underground press. Like I would certainly go to you over Amazon, right? Like um, <laughs> like that. I, I don't know. That's that's what comes to mind. Like that's that's literally like the the hardest part right now is kind of that bottleneck. Um, either you either you, you you use Kindle Direct Publishing or Lulu, or you're basically just gonna you're it's it's gonna be hard to to make money on books i guess to to, to make it to, to make money so um that's i guess that's off the top of my head hopefully that helps i mean i yeah i yeah hopefully that helps yeah i really appreciate that so um yeah and if if anyone wants to uh check out um Please check out Liberty Under Attack publications. Oh, yeah, I guess I, I guess I could talk. I guess they're, I could talk a little. They're bit. They're amazing. 
I guess I guess I guess, yeah, I, guess yeah, I can mention do. um second round book on strategy and hashtag Agora. We offer those are both available for free online. Um all these books are available for free, like the free Bonnie books tab. A lot of the books in the LA publications catalog are just from there that we just put in paperback format. So all the stuff's available for, available for free. But um if you do want to support um support my efforts, support um, you know, LA publications, um, and go pick up paperback uh, books there. We've got um we've got bundles. Uh, for example, Self Liberation Bundle, we published like nineteen or twenty books. The Self Liberation Bundle is all of those. Um we've got uh, the Crypto Anarchist Bundle, the Anarchist Fiction Bundle, or I think it's the Anarchist Fiction Bundle. Um but yeah, we've got all, all sorts of discounted bundles and um we'll very, very soon um we had we had a a ghost pad, a, a really, really sick ghost pad kit that uh Jamie Baconic um made of a special Vani pad is what we called it. Um, a, a firmware hardened laptop with some really cool hacking tools. Um, yeah, we we're, we're hoping to get another one of those, in, and uh, we're also working on a um, we're also working on um, something we're calling Freedom Boxes, which are going to be the infrastructure for um, the Pasnia Library. Um, which I mean, there, there's there's a lot of projects, but anyway, um, we've got uh, for Elio Publications, um, yeah, books and coming crypto anarchy tools, privacy tools as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, libertarianattack.com. And if you're an author looking for a publisher, um, we can uh, help with that, libertarianattack.com forward slash publish. And uh, if you're an author and you already have a book published and you just want to get it in our catalog, um, we always uh, we always like to do that, too. Um, we always like to have authors reach out to us and, and offer it, too. So, um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I guess uh, yeah, I guess that's it for, for OEO Publications. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, and speaking of uh, 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 listed um, listed publications, uh, uh, we're both selling uh, Willie Forrester's book right now, and um, and uh, if you guys want to check that out, uh, please do. Um, she's uh, she's an amazing gal, and uh, and and her her book's very good. So yeah, check that out. Yeah. Um. So, uh, uh, did you have any more questions, Dag? Um. Just a just a slight comment, I suppose. Um. I was just gonna say that it's really awesome that you guys offer so many books. Like, and you know, also like you know, digital, like free format. Um. You know, because like, so I'll keep like some books, like just like on like my phone, so I have something to read whenever. But man, there is just something so nice about having an actual book. You know. Um. Mm -hmm. You know, some that consider shell something you can lend to somebody. You know, something like that. So it's uh, you know, it's nice that you have the options there, and I really like the packages and everything. And then also, uh, you had mentioned uh, subversions, sedition, sabotage manual. Uh, I'm a little over halfway through that, and it is really good. I definitely highly recommend that mm -hmm. to anybody. I've been wanting to read it for years, and finally getting around to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a great read. It's a great read, and I will mention for for uh, for folks who don't like reading and would rather listen, um, there's an audiobook available for that uh, um, free libertyintertack.com forward slash Benstone audiobook. Um, we'll have uh, all the links and uh, the audiobook there. Um, another, yeah, just another, uh, um, yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm going. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, uh, and you got all my questions and. Mm -hmm. um, and this is such a great, uh, great episode. And there's, there's so much, imp you know, you gave us so much information in uh, a very short period of time. And uh, so I, yeah, we really appreciate that. And um, yeah, definitely check out as much of Shane stuff as possible um, on a Gorse Nexus or Liberty Under Attack or his, his, um, his, his podcast, uh, just, just everywhere. So um we're we're the liberty community is um um is is very blessed to have you for sure so no oh, I, um, I definitely i definitely really appreciate, appreciate that i definitely appreciate it yeah that. second yeah, yeah. I appreciate that and and i um, guess I, I i will say just as as a as a really positive note to to leave out on um you know uh there's some some new areas of uh new areas of opportunity for agoras for um, you know, for uh, for business minded people. So, um, yeah, view all this as opportunity. Um, there's lots of new opportunities out there. Um, lots of new opportunities. So, um, yeah. And uh, with that, I certainly appreciate I, uh, you guys. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. Me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, and, and yeah, like like you're talking about in your your recent article there. Um, I I agree 100 percent on that. But it's like 
this, this last year has definitely been yeah, you know time. crazy but like uh, it's been very liberating for mm. for me personally um it, it's almost like when shit's going down it kind of it makes it easier to realize what it is you need to do yep. you know um may, maybe that's what i'm trying to say but it's uh but yeah i've i've uh, i'm i'm feeling focused you know <laughs> i'm feeling optimistic and even though there's a lot of craziness it's like yeah i feel like i know, know what i need to do mm-hmm. yep yep exactly exactly um yeah yep right there with you 100 percent. got no, nothing else to add <laughs> Sweet, sweet. Um, then, yeah, I guess I'm good, too. Yeah, well, with that said, I'll wrap it up with a quote here. Um, Just as the state is obsolete as a means of defense against foreign governments and private criminals, so politics are obsolete as a means of defense against the state. Uh, political reform, um, revolutions, or education at most, changes rulers and slogans. It does not bring about enduring freedom. In a community of a few hundred, democratic procedures can be helpful. In a nation of millions, they are only placebos. Bon you life, March 1973. Um, is that a, a, a Rayo quote? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. One of my favorite Rayo quotes, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's an yeah, awesome quote. Um, yeah. Agoras Nix is out. Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm. Device connection terminated.